What's up guys? <clears throat> Back for another Dark Souls lore through. Um, and things have just gone from bad to worse. Um, from the Tomb of the Giants to um, Ariamis, I recorded and realized that my mic wasn't on the whole time. So I've been doing voiceovers, and in order to get them in there, I had to convert them to another file format, and then, you know, sit there and do a voiceover. And there was an error converting two files. And of course I was like, oh, uh, they're converted, they all look good, I'm going to delete the originals. And, uh, of course, once I did that, then I realized that there is one file that is uh, completely unrecoverable. So, unfortunately, this is going to be a little bit of a different uh, playthrough here uh, because we're, I'm just going to replay it. Um, obviously, uh, there's events and things that will happen that we can no longer do. Um, so, uh, I apologize, and this is the best I can do. I still want to touch on the lore stuff, uh, even if we don't get the events. Um, there's plenty of people playing this game online you can go look it up or play it yourself um to get you know some of the events that go on here but yeah we'll just continue on as if um none of this happened um so yeah there's two fang boars in um in this area and uh they are hard to take down they're full of armor. One little different thing about them is that they actually don't have that little hole on their butt. <laughs> so you can't backstab them this time, uh, which you can do with the one in Undead Berg. And I think that the one in the Undead Berg um, probably um, uh, was there because there was a channeler there in the Undead Church. So. Oh, yeah. I don't know if there's any of my stuff here still. I mean, I still have stuff from Ariamis. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to have to go uh, to the uh, um, bonfire um, at the end of the run through here to talk about a few items. I did get a Channeler's Trident my first time <laughs> on the first Channeler. Um, and so it's, it's a shame that that is now going to be gone from the annals of history uh, because that was really awesome. Uh, okay. Oh. So one thing that I point out like five times already, because I, this is going to be my third time talking about this stuff. Um, these are just regular undead that we see like right in the beginning, but they just have this crystal structure on them. All right. All right, come over here. Um, <clears throat> all right, I'm going to slow down here a little bit and talk about some stuff. So there's all these, like, objects around here, like this, and then there's these, um, like, these things with books on them these music stands, these book stands, and there's also these like lecterns which I'll look at when we see another one again. Um, I'm not really sure what they all are. I mean, obviously I know what these are, but uh, I don't know if they're like alchemical things or ast astrological things. Um, there's still new guys coming at me here. All right, um, so also there is a blue uh, crystal golem here. We saw a gold one and we saw in the regular colored ones, but this one is blue and is associated with the uh, DLC. 
and we kill it, and it gives us <gasps> nothing. Well, the broken pendant, which I already have. Uh, so let's and ignore some of the other stuff I have here. Uh, broken pendant. <clears throat> Half of a broken stone pendant. The vine appears to originate from Ulysseal. I'm not sure how you would know that. A powerful magic can be sensed from this ancient stone, yet men of this time can neither manipulate nor sense its power, which has a distinct air consisting of both reverence and nostalgia. So yeah, it's a broken stone pendant. There's probably another half of one. It's from Ulysil. Um, it's powerful magic, but it's untappable, and it's not of this time, yet men of this time can neither manipulate or sense its power. So it make, makes me think that maybe Ulysil, I mean, I think we've stated a couple times in the, uh, other videos that Ulysil is um, Darkroot Garden, but in the past. So it's just another indication that we're going to be traveling in time here. So would I be so lucky as to... I wasn't even wearing the gold serpent ring when I got it. There's a chest up on the top of one of these bookshelves here. Uh, that's the Avalon, and I won't be getting that, but... Um, that would be the funniest thing if I got another um, Channeler's Trident. So yeah, they just dropped the crystal weapons and stuff, and we've read those, and I don't really um, there's these uh, globe objects here as well, which I'm not really sure, again, their purpose, but they're cool looking. Uh, but yeah, these are the regal archives where all of the knowledge would be stored, and um, they've gone with this idea a lot. Uh, apparently Miyazaki, you know, likes Harry Potter, and he tried to get this area based off of Harry Potter like the moving staircases and such. Um, but they've done this in 3 and Bloodborne, and there's kind of a reference to it in, in 2. Yeah, here's that other object. It's like a box. It's got wheels on it, and it's got a way, way to push it around. But it almost looks like it could be a lectern, but I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's, it's just really interesting. Um... I'll try to remember the best I can what items were where, uh, because, you know, we're not going to be able to pick them up. Oops. Um, so... What is this guy doing in the back? He's just running wild. All right. <clears throat> I just hate that this, <laughs> the part that I lost here happens to contain, like, you know, uh, oops, <laughs> like an actual scripted event here that, like, I cannot recreate at all. Like, almost any other place besides, you know, just in general a boss, um, you know, you can you can kind of recreate it exactly, but not here. Uh, so yeah, there's Twinkling Titanite here. Uh, we learned from the giant last episode, uh, or a couple episodes ago maybe, um, that he gets the shiny shiny from the Duke. Um, and uh, we know that the Twinkling Titanite comes from the clams, and we'll see that... Uh, that... Uh, the Duke certainly has clams. Um, so yeah, I mean, these are all just souls that are going these, uh... That are on these guys. Um, no weapons. Oops, I didn't have my shield out. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, there's a mimic chest here. Um, and it had a, um, in, an ascended weapon of some sort in it. Really supporting my theory about, well not my theory, but uh, the state of the nation being that there's always ascended weapons in uh, mimics. So uh, I believe, yeah, this, I mean, this has got to be closed uh, when you first come through here. Um, and this is down. <laughs> Um, I do have a theory about the mimics, by the way, which I will go through in the next episode when I thought about it, when we get the symbol of avarice. Um, so yeah, we saw the undead with the crystallization on them. And then we go up to this tower up here, and we can start to see that there's crystallization happening, you know, in... It'd be cool if you could push these around. That would make this item really fun. Um, you can see the crystallization happening here. Um, there is a, uh, twinkling, or a crystal lizard, which I s proposed may be created by Seath, because they have twinkling titanite a lot of times. And there's also a hollowed crystal, um, uh, guy, um, like a one-off enemy. Oh, you can see my shirt through the shield when I parry. And he comes after you, and I took him out. He's wearing all crystalline armor and stuff. Um, and then you... <laughs> just so funny. I'm just saying this. Uh, then you come through, and you go through here, and uh, then Seath is here. There's nothing else here, but... I mean, it's the room, but it's just Seath. And you can't get to him. Uh, and uh, the other thing I mentioned is you could leave the boss fog. So once you came in, it, you could go... It's just like re enter or you know leave whatever through the boss fog and you can do that see I it's the only fight where you can do that and uh, so um, yeah you you're supposed to fight um, um, Seath here and he uh, he kills you uh, you cannot uh, get him and even if you could he doesn't take any damage so then you wake up in a prison cell, as I say. This just happens to be a really uh, unfortunate uh, episode to have lost. Um, so let me go to the uh, prison cell, where I would have gone. But yeah, Seath uh, can't take any damage, which is very interesting. He, he looks awesome, right? I think we see him in the next episode, because I fight him... I still have that footage, um, and we'll talk about him then. Um, but yeah, I guess we're just gonna we're just gonna go through here like uh... ooh. Oops, <laughs> I didn't even see you shooting. Um, and yeah, we have to go up one level. I'm gonna do this just because I know I'm gonna get hit by a rogue channeler thing and die. Alright. Okay. Once again, it would be great if. I got a channeler stride it. No. Okay. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> Top level gameplay. Eat it. Um, it's kind of a 
cool view of the crystal forest. Oh, we missed uh, Siglin's line, uh, storyline too. Oh, that sucks. I mean, we got the end of it, but... Um, um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, here's another area of the archives. Um, and we wake up in here with a bonfire. And when we go to warp, it says this bonfire is cut off from others and cannot warp. So it's really a prison. I wonder if that indicates that Seed was able to control the bonfires. Because we know that they're all linked through the fire keepers and stuff. Um, but I don't know if that happened or not. Um, but yeah, then we come out, we get the key. Uh, which I guess we'll read all the keys here. And then there's a, uh, a particular snake, a man serpent down here, that turns on that like record player as like an alarm that we've escaped. And these guys go and run and block the door up there, uh, which is locked at the time. Um, so yeah, I mean, so man serpents are here. We saw them at Sen's Fortress uh, as well. And uh, we know that um, Seath does experiments, and we know that uh, you know serpents are imperfect dragons. So it's possible that he was trying to uh, recreate the dragons. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at the uh, key here. So we first get this one, the Archive Tower cell key. The Archive Tower, once a trove of precious tomes and letters, became a prison after the onset of Seath's madness. The serpent men who guard the prison know not the value of what they hide. In the basement of the tower are the writhing mistakes of the terrifying experiments which were con conducted there. So yeah, um, Seath does a lot of experiments. Uh, so we just ran down this way. And I, there was these Pasakas, these uh, enemies were going to come on down here, and they ran up to me, uh, but uh, I'm gonna, because the alarm's off, I'm going to have to run down to them. But the Pasakas are really interesting because um, we will see that, uh, you know, he's been taking these maidens and turning them into these weird creatures. And in particular, I want to point out you know, these things here. I want to point out their attack patterns. Um, we talked about this a little in the last episode. They'll shoot, they'll do the physical attacks like that, but then they also, um, they're of course not doing it now. Why aren't they doing it? Um, they shoot out water very similarly to the, um, very similar to the, uh, Hydra. There. There it is. Okay. So, yeah, um... These guys used to be housed in this big cage here. Oh, they drop humanity. Um, and then, yeah, so there was, <laughs> there's like a lot of stuff and I'm doing it out of order, so sorry. Uh, apologies for the kind of frantic nature of this episode. Uh, there's two uh, Pasakas here that uh, do, don't aggro, no matter what you do. And I learned uh, with these guys that you can backstab them, actually. I didn't know that. But um, you kill both of them, and then they drop two miracles. Um, soothing sunlight and bountiful sunlight. Special miracle granted to the maidens of Guinevere. Princess of the Sun restores high HP for self and vicinity. 
The miracles of Guinevere, the princess cherished by all, grant their blessing to a great many warriors. And Bountiful Sunlight is similar. Um, so, yeah, we, we start to see that um, they, uh, they, that he's capturing maidens and turning them into uh, these pisakas somehow and using some knowledge he used from the Hydra. Now he does, as we kind of talked about in the last episode, oops, oops, <laughs> that's not what I wanted to do at all. Wow! Still dying, even after I've cleared an area. Sorry, just trying to get my thoughts. In the last episode we talked about Rhea, and she um, gets abducted by Seath if you buy all of her miracles, and then she you find her hollow in here. And so the, the thing that I thought was really kind of nice touch is that you see a channeler in the uh, undead church. Again, I've... I've done these multiple times. I've probably talked about all this, so I apologize. But um, anyway, that's what uh, Rhea would have been turned into. Uh, we did kill her before that. Uh, so I guess, good? <clears throat> but yeah, um, I was trying to just show uh, up above here that, uh, above the Pasakas, the guards up here, I wanted to show the... Uh, and I suppose I should probably kill all these people again because I'm going to turn on the alarm and I don't want to have an issue. Ooh, jump far. Oh yeah, and we did get a Manserpent Greatsword from one of these guys, too. So, um, that was another one of the quote-unquote rare weapons that we, we got. Um, but we got another one now. I guess let's read it, because we have it. The single-bladed Bloodstained Greatsword is the choice weapon of the Slithering Serpent Man of Sin's Fortress. An ordinary human will have great difficulty swinging these. Um, so, not a ton of lore on there, but uh, they're really good strength weapon. I like the Man Serpent Greatsword a lot. Um, can I kill them with one, like, regular hit? Nope. That's why I was trying to go double-handed. These guys are no joke. Oh, great. They have a grab attack, which I, you know, hesitate with actually trying to show. But, um... It, they like pierce your face with uh, with their um, tentacle thing or their I don't know what they have in their face, um, but I don't want to get grabbed <laughs> to show it. Um, yeah, so I guess one thing I wasn't mentioning was that Big Head Logan was here and he talked to him and he said, "Oh, please save me." And I said, "Sure." So then we come up here, and if I can survive this time, let's 
suppose I should rush this one. This is the tough one. Wow. Oops. All right. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Be gone with you. So yeah, when you first come out of the cell, the guy like goes, oh crap, ring the alarm. And the alarm is covered with snake skin, which is kind of interesting. And uh, the the uh, man serpents run up to block the door, and all the pasakas are like released and angered, and they go aggressively. They like run up the stairs at you, but you can come up here and turn it off. And then in here is the tower extra key. I don't know why they made them different, but. Uh, this is what this says. Perhaps the serpent men were careless, for there are several keys scat uh, scattered about which fit archive tower cells, and it just allows you to open up everything. Um, like each cell up here. There's only one um, thing worth uh, talking about, um, which one item, uh, which is the maiden set. Um, which you get uh, by dropping down. Um, I think I free Logan in the next episode, but if I don't, I unlock this, I go get a key in the actual archive itself, and then I free him, which is great, and then there's a Firekeeper soul over there, which, as you can see, I messed this last plus six now, so a few things have happened since uh, I filmed this. Um, I think it was S's Flask plus three when I came through this area. Um, so anyway, I went through all the cells, I got all the souls, all the things, killed all the guys, and then I got um, a, uh, I got the Maiden set, which is the set that Rhea was wearing, I believe. And so, uh, but I think that's, I think I probably have all. Yeah, I have just stuff from the. Um, well, let me check. I didn't go all the way. Yeah, I just have stuff from the uh, painting of Ariamis because that's what I just recorded. So yeah, um, basically you walk down this walkway, drop down to that walkway, and in that room there's uh, the maiden set, which I'll have to grab from my box. And then you come and kill these guys. And then officially, at this point, notice the crystal forest. And see, there's a bonfire down there. Oops. That was weird. Um. So we break free and... And basically, we gotta just run around uh, and collect everything and get this stairway configured correctly. I don't need to do that, so I'm not gonna do that. So I'm just gonna go... Actually, you know what? I think I did this in the, in the game. I think I just escaped and we were getting a little long 
And so I decided to just come down here and <laughs> it was actually quite funny. I wish I could show, but uh, I got followed by all these guys. I couldn't rest at the bonfire. They all crowded me. There was an alert on my game that said low disk space and I'm like trying to fight them all off. I will say I didn't die once in all of the Duke's archives until I uh, fought Seath. Just saying. And it was a miracle thing I got out of and of course you won't be able to see it. Ever. Okay. Um, so let's go to the bottomless box, and I'm just gonna check, again, there might be stuff here that comes from later in the game, but, uh, I'm just trying to, um, barbed straight sword, yeah, we must have read this, I'm just like now double, double thinking about what we, uh, what we've read in past ones, what we've read in the future ones, it's not, uh, I guess it's good for your brain. Okay, Channeler's Trident, definitely is new. Trident of the Six-Eyed Channelers, sorcerers who serve Seath the Scaleless in collecting human specimens. Thrusted in circular motions in a unique martial arts dance that stirs nearby alleys into a bloodthirsty frenzy. So yeah, that just basically confirms that the Channelers are the sorcerers that collect humans for the experiments to be on. So I guess whenever we see them out in the world, that's probably related to them snatching people up. And I and we also know that the serpents do that a little bit. And the serpents are in um, Sen's fortress. And we also see Logan trapped there, which would make sense. Um, he keeps getting trapped in here. Um, all right. So I think Crystal Halberd was what we found in that other mimic up in, in this area. Okay, I think that's it for um, for like weapons and such. For this area. Um, and then there's two sets, although I think we might read the channeler set in the next episode. So I'll just read the maiden set. It's the holy priest set. Here, maidenhood. Yeah, so I think this is what, um, what's her name was wearing? Rhea. White hood worn by traveling maidens. It is part of their formal attire regardless of rank. It is soft and well made, but does not offer much in the way of defense, making it ill suited to use in battle. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I believe that's it. So we have the channeler stuff, but I believe that's in the next episode that we find that. Um, yep, and that's it. Um, now I'm going to check rings just in case. Dust crown. White seance ring is the other thing we found with the body. A divine ring entrusted to the head bishop of the Way of White, an apostle to All Father Lloyd, uncle to Lord Gwyn. It grants additional attunement slots. The head bishop of the Way of White is the guardian of law encased, and one of the great royals of Thurland. So yeah, All Father Lloyd, which we know about from the Lloyd's Talisman and one of the coins, he's Lord Gwyn's uncle which is interesting. And he is uh, probably a god in the in, in the Way of Light. I would say he's probably the one of the main gods in the Way of Light. Um, the head bishop of the Way of Light is an apostle to All Father Lloyd, so it makes me think that that's, that's probably what's going on. And um, 
Yeah. So, I mean, Gwen had a family. Gwen had parents. Gwen had parents' brothers. <laughs> so, um, and yeah, it says that uh, the head bishop of the Way White is one of the great royals of Thrillin. So it might be related to um, Rhea, because we know that she's part of the main family, or one of the main families of Thrillin. Uh, she's a princess, so... Um, this could be the family. And this might be, I guess, Rhea's stuff, I guess. Um, I'm not sure. Um, just again, just in case I miss something. I think we're good, though. All right. That should do it. <laughs> um, sorry for a weird episode. Uh, but uh, resuming where we left off next time. Thanks. Bye.